Isn't that the prettiest thing you've ever seen? So look at my living diversity here. I'm down 18, 20 inches and that soil is barely disturbed. That's what I want. That's the beauty of a subsoiler. If you believe in, if you believe in no-till and regenerative, but you have a problem with a real hard, hard, hard soil, you can go in here and you can do this, and not kill off your so your whole soil biology. This whole field is still living. All the roots are alive. <laughs> All the biology is alive. The only thing we've done is we've gone real deep and done a lift. Man, it's just absolutely fabulous. So what are we doing today, Doc? I have no idea how to piece this together. I've got like three days worth of video between us working on the fields and working out here. The main thing we're gonna talk about is I'm gonna to talk to you about dealing with my really, really hard compact clay soils. Now on our farm property, the problem is, is really high potassium and potassium is a flattener. What does that mean? It means that it allows the, the clay particles to actually sort of separate and flatten down and it creates this really hard concrete layer subsurface you get past the roots and you got this really hard clay layer so you can mechanically or nutrient wise change that and i'm doing both calcium is an opener potassium is a flattener and magnesium is a squeezer so our potassium is super super off the chart high here and that's what's causing it so uh, today i'm going to run a subsoiler on the fields now we are a no-till operation we do not, we never have bare ground here. However, a subsoiler can be used on a regenerative or no-till operation because it goes, it's a very thin blade. It goes down in the ground, just has one little tooth, and it lifts that deep soil up. And really, if you want to run your tractor over that, that, that hole, that line it causes, you'll never even really know that you did it. So it's a real good way without heavily impacting soil biology, without impacting root zones too much, it's a great way to open up that soil similar to what you do on aeration. Uh, yesterday we came out, I did a spike aeration on the back. On my backyard, I'm gonna be spike aerating every two weeks probably back there just to open that soil up. We put lime down there, same thing, calcium. Calcium will help open up that soil. So we're putting down calcium. We put down calcium out here, we cut this. I cut the back, I did a whole bunch of stuff. It's just been a crazy. Now I have 14,000 pounds of lime showing up tomorrow morning. So I'll put that on a different video, so hit that subscribe button because who doesn't want to see 14,000 pounds of lime going down? So today I'm just going to throw together real quick, I'll show David using the subsoiler on his John Deere tractor, uh, maybe a little bit of the aeration and some cut, just different stuff. Here we go. 25 inch by... Hold on one sec. Let me get the girls on camera here. Just comfortable as can be. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. We love Doc's house. Dude, that guy feeds us all the time. He's bush hogging and I'm fire ant killing. When we bought this property, we had mounds that were three feet wide and two feet high. And I have killed and killed and killed. I've got them down to the point where there's only a few. If you step on one of those mounds, you're going to the hospital. That's how bad they were. They were bad in here. I've got them mostly under control now. Well, there it is. There's my subsoiler. It's a pretty big hit, isn't it? How much does that weigh? About a year. 200. 150? No, 200. 200? No, About that ain't no 200. Man, you're thinking you're so strong. <laughs> it's about 100, 150 pounds, I guess. I put a new uh, water pump, everything. It, it just still kept running hot. The morning coffee discussions. John went to tractor supply <laughs> not ace hardware <laughs> he went to tractor supply and picked up my order i got a, that's I got a john a, deere that's got a that's a subsoiler so that is a 
a subsoiler that will go in the soil. It lists deep and it doesn't do a whole lot of surface damage. And that's what we have to have here. Our soil biology is absolutely critical here. We do not want to till our ground. We want to be underground lifting that hard clay. Layer. Hold it up for him, John. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were taking That's okay. <laughs> We like we like we like the bullshit conversations anyways. <laughs> <laughs> it down as low as we possibly can yeah. so that all right so this is what I'm talking about this that till is way down deep and the only disturbance on my soil is that little line right there. That's it. So now water can infiltrate in here. Lime, nutrients, roots can get into here. This is absolutely perfect. This is worth, this was a pain in the butt and it was absolutely worth it. This is a good example. I don't know if you can see it, but now I've actually got a little bit of a hump here. And that's that soil, that's that ground being lifted up from underneath. And even, <laughs> what has he got? A 46 horsepower, four series, five series tractor. And those wheels want to spin with the resistance from that hard soil down here. And that is just hard as could be. But as I said, now the water, water cannot get past this now. It can't run down. So no longer will I have any issues with any water coming down and sheeting it down. I'm so happy with the way this field looks. I was telling David, now I did the corn field up here and then I did the high potassium field as we call it. But man, this is, this just looks phenomenal. This is all just gonna come to life now with all the oxygen, water, lime that's gonna go in there. But I didn't kill my soil and I didn't kill my roots. Everything's just gonna heal up. Now, Tomorrow morning, the lime truck's gonna come through and he'll actually pack some of this back down. But I told David I wasn't gonna do my buck field, but I think I'm gonna have him do the buck field too. I mean, I got him here with the tractor and I got the tine on there and he said, yeah, let's roll. So, but man, it looks great. And I got, I got warm temperatures coming in later on so I can go ahead and replant no problem. All right. So the only problem with my decision right now is the guys are in the woods feeding all my feeders <laughs> and I got to pull all my irrigation crap out of this field before David comes and hits it. So take off jackets, take off sweatshirts. Here we go. So how do I determine which direction that I'm doing my subsoiling? I want to go opposite of my water flow and drainage. So my drainage is actually coming this way, my slope. 
So I actually want to go across here and do my lines this way. And that water will actually have to be forced to actually go over sort of a hump and then down into the ground. It can't escape this field. So all my water is going to penetrate a good 18 inches down into the ground now. I really wouldn't, hadn't planned on touching this field because it's so beautiful. But, I mean, I got David out here. I got it, so... And it's so thick and lush, it'll be fine. But I think I'm going to have him... He's doing about 30-inch passes over here. I think I'm going to have him do about a 36-inch pass in here. So while I got him here, I'm going to have him turn my compost pile. Yeah. That stuff's gonna explode now. When you get a rain, it's gonna explode. I'm get lime tomorrow. Yeah. And then I get a uh, rain. I think I've converted him. I think I'm finally converting him. Keep telling him over and over and over don't till your ground. Don't till your ground. I don't want to see any bare soil. He keeps bringing equipment over and it's going to mess up my soil. I said, no, 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 no. So I actually had to go buy that piece of equipment, that subsoiler, it's $350. I had to go buy that subsoiler because the one he brought that he thought I was talking about was a big blade. I don't want to turn my soil. All I want to do is I want some, uh, I want a skinny blade to go down deep, 18 to 20 inches, do a subsurface lift, that's it. Now, if I wanted to come back and ride this over, I could. I could push this right down, but I'm going to leave it open. Now, if I was smart, I'd order me some uh, Austrian winter peas. Throw some winter peas down these rows. Aha. Hadn't thought about that. I think it's time to go inside and do an order. I need to get more cereal rye for the field up there, and I may order some Austrian winter peas. Man, if I were to run winter peas down these rows that are opened up, not only would it shoot roots down, but it helped eat up some of this potassium. Yeah, it's just awesome. Only bad thing is, is I'm not gonna have rain for a while, but I'm gonna put the irrigation back out here. We'll irrigate it and seed it, should be fine. All right, so David Bush hogged, he brought his subsoiler and it wasn't a subsoiler. It was a regular plow hitch and I'm like, nope. So you're gonna pick one up tomorrow morning or today. John's gonna pick up a subsoil or a tractor supply. David's gonna dump his tractor. He'll come back in the morning, Wednesday morning. I got 14,000 pounds of lime. So anyways, what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna spike aerate this and we're gonna put down some lime. From where you went to my house on Lowe's, I'll just pick up some fast acting lime, which is fine. And then I'm gonna use the spikes today. These are the spikes. It does not pull cores. So I don't wanna, I don't want to be pulling cores this time of year. You know, your lawn is not aggressively growing so, and it has to heal up. So you want to do a, a, an aeration when you're actively growing. This is actually growing, but I don't want a core aerate. I just want to spike and open it up.
you can tell he ain't a good redneck because he ain't got a knife. He ripped the bag open. I said, man, uh, dump that one bag in here. Now, this is the pelletized lime. Hold on, let me get these leaves out of here. This is that pelletized lime. Just goes out a little bit easier. Um, I don't want to use this on my field. I want to use the regular um, calcitic lime that comes from the rock. But there she is. So, uh, spike aeration, thousands and thousands of holes out here, and technically we could come out and real mow this now. I mean, there's no damage to the lawn from the aerator. It's all just spikes, just little tiny holes. And he, John was saying, he was, he was thinking, man, every other aerator I've seen pulls cores, pulls those plugs out leave it slap and it. leaves it nasty. This thing is just nice. Now it doesn't relieve a lot of compaction, which is why you want to do core aeration. You want to open up that soil and let the soil spread out. This is more just for drainage, poor soil, you know, hard clay. But the only thing I saw as I was going along, see that little clump over there? Right here. Grab that, put it back in the hole. It's called fixing your divot, man. Fix your divot. And there was one more over here somewhere. This one, just step on that. Step on that. That's about it. I mean, there really isn't a whole bunch of them. Every once in a while you get a spike hit hard and pull up a little piece of ground. That's all we do. But other than that, I mean, that just looks phenomenal. So I've got that down. I got the lime treatment and uh, I'm probably gonna put down a little bit of fertilizer and then we'll run the irrigation because we are going to be dry again, period. Ooh, I'm tired, man. Up at 5 a.m. and then this was a long, long couple days. But we finally got some color coming into the trees. This is the most wonderful time of year. The older I get, the more I dislike summer and the more I like fall. Fall is my time of the year, man. Even though we're gonna get some weird weather patterns move in here, um, we've cooled down and we're gonna go back up into the 80s and be dry, but then I looked at my 10 day, we're gonna touch down to 39 degrees, so. But it's just wonderful, wonderful weather. So hard soil. If you've got a low pH, you can put down lime, put down a calcium-based lime, and that'll help. Remember, calcium is also an opener, not only does it reduce or lower your, or raise your pH up, but it'll also help open up that soil. Clay soils are clay soils. They're gonna be hard, but there may be something else. That's why I say get a soil test. If I didn't test all of our soils and all of our fields, I'd never know that I had super high potassium. And that potassium, again, is a flattener causing that clay to sort of release and flatten down subsurface. So let's see what happens on these fields. I think we're gonna have some really good results. I've been working with this for a long time, guys. <laughs> I have really been working these fields and we keep these things green 100% of the time, roots in the ground all the time, and still we battle that hard clay soil. So aeration, do a lot of aeration, put down your lime. If you've got anything below a 6.5, hey, put down a calcium based lime. It'll help open that up and do an aeration. Now. You don't want to do an aeration necessarily in the winter time. That's not when you do it. You want to do it during the active growing season. But I've got actively growing roots out here, so it's not a problem. So anyways, tomorrow morning, I have 14,000 pounds of lime coming, and I'll put it on a separate video. That should be fun to watch, and uh, hit subscribe. And I'm going to go rest for a while. Talk to you later, Doc.